today, almost a year away from giving up tenure at RIT in order to acquire the job title of Research Scientist in Magic. Magic is RIT's Center for Media, Arts, Games, Interaction, and Creativity, and I have what we call an Access and Collaboration Technologies Initiative, so if you put it together, you get Magic Act. But we may as well just rename what I'm doing the Enable Lab, because it has taken over my life, and, you know, with a little bit of luck, it'll take over some of your lives as well. This is what we do right now. Um, this little girl is named Shay, and if you keep your eye on her now hidden right hand, you can see that she's missing some fingers. But she is being given a device by one of our volunteers, which is a 3D printed plastic hand, and she's shaking his hand by bending her wrist, and she's smiling. And this is what I do these days. I make little girls smile and their parents cry, and it's just an amazing thing. <laughs> And this all started for me a year and a half ago, but it started really for the world just about three years ago when the guy on the right, Richard Van As, a South African carpenter, accidentally cut the fingers off of one hand and was told that he could not get a prosthetic hand to solve that problem for less than $40,000. And even then it probably wouldn't work because fingers are really hard. But he was a problem solver and he went out over the internet and he found Ivan Owen, a puppeteer and a prop maker, of course, for the movies, um, who had made a great big mechanical costume in which pulling on strings caused huge metal fingers to open and close. And they decided to work together. And over the course of a year, they developed this, the original Robo Hand, a plastic, 3D printable, mechanical device with strings running from a back-of-the-arm gauntlet to a front-of-the-hand palm. And when you bend your wrist, the strings tighten up underneath the fingers. And so, as we like to say to the boys and girls who we give these to, when you bend your wrist, you will make a... It's that easy. So a year and a half ago, he made a YouTube video in which he told the story I just told you. And he said, you know, I found out that one in 2,000 children are born with some kind of an upper limb abnormality. One in 2,000 children. Far more than you would think, but that's because they usually walk around as grown-ups and as kids with their hands behind their back. And that this device would be helpful for them. And so he set out to raise a little bit of money in order to start making them for children. But he mentioned in passing that he was putting the design files on the internet so other people could do this as well. And that plus a couple of YouTube video comments got me started. I don't know about you, but YouTube video comments are usually the most demoralizing uh, pieces of literature on the planet. Uh, in this case, there were two people who said, you know, what this guy is doing is, is, is really cool. I have a 3D printer. I would do that. They didn't say they were going to do that. They said they would do it. But I had a bright idea. And instead of preparing a course, um, one morning I added my own comment to the YouTube video. And this is about the entirety of the comment. And I had made a Google Map mashup, and I invited people to put pins on the map if they had a printer and wanted to help, or if they needed a hand. And the pins started showing up day by day. Within six weeks, there were 70 pins on the map. And people started calling me. And they said, OK, this is really great. Now what do we do? And I had no idea. <laughs> and as you can see, it's growing, and it's growing, and it's growing. In fact, it is growing and has been growing by about 5 to 10 percent a week for about 18 months. And this slide was made when I had to send in my TEDx slides. And we're now up to, today, 2,838. And as I say, that means we're going to be up to 3,000 people in our Google Plus community by next week. Now, Parts of what I thought were going to happen really happened. And of course, much of what has happened is entirely different, which is a major theme of this chapter of, I think, everyone's life. 
This was the idea. You would become aware of one of these devices. You would go to a website where you could download a 3D model of this sort. You could customize it if you needed to. And you could print it on a 3D printer. You've seen our printer, but it's basically a glue gun on an arm that goes back and forth, back and forth. And it lays down thin threads of plastic, which become solid, printed, mechanical parts which can then be assembled using nuts and bolts and strings and we're improving so that we're eliminating the nuts and bolts and you pretty soon after a few hours of assembly you get a device that just lets this kid pick up a spoon or pick up a glass nothing to it and of course then and there are videos like this showing up every day all over the world right now. He says, thank you, this is really great. Now, it's not just hands. Uh, we developed an arm here at RIT, now known as the RIT arm, in which if you bend your elbow, you make a fist. I haven't got a good rhyme for that one, but you can see it's quite useful, it's quite fun, it makes him smile. And for that matter, it's not just amputations. Somewhere in this audience is one of my students, Elizabeth Jackson, who's developing a, an exoskeleton for people who have their entire hand but may have lost control of their fingers. Well, she's come up with a really nice object, gizmo, um, that will allow you to open and close your hands as you open and close your elbow. This is not rocket science. That's what's so interesting about it. Um, but it's really powerful. Now, those of you who heard my apologies, my TEDx talk last time around, here's what's new since then. The original notion was that people would match themselves up. Well, now we have a matchmaker um, who goes by the email address of EnableMatcher. And here's an exemplary story that came out just two weeks ago. Um, this was our first hand delivered to China. This woman heard about us somehow. She wrote to her cousin in Canada who wrote to us. Enable Matcher said, okay, so you need one of these hands. Do I have a volunteer? Amazingly, a volunteer showed up that day, also from China, our first volunteer from China, one week after she asked whether she could possibly arrange to get one of these hands, she got one of these hands. The story is sort of spreading all over the world. It's a social disease. And we're doing everything we can to promote it. Um, we are democratizing this process by developing software that runs in a web browser called Handomatic Software with a target in mind of public libraries, public schools, and Kinko's or UPS. Any anywhere where there's a printer connected to a, the internet and connected to a 3D printer, you can walk up, go to webapp.enable.me. You can plug in a few critical measurements and it generates the files and it tells you how to print them on a, your, your local printer or how to send them to a service in the sky which now will deliver your prints um, for a fee or send them to a volunteer in our community who will do the job. We've also developed a whole education program and I say program and I mean We've got a few score people out of our few thousand volunteers who are particularly interested in education and they're producing videos and they're producing diagrams and they are hijacking classrooms and after school programs to get children involved in this process. And here's an example. Often, and if you ask your children or visit a class and you say, have you ever seen a kid who's missing fingers? The kids know it. They, they, every, in every class there are one or two kids who knows a case like that. And these days they're hearing about 3D printers and someone says, could we make one of those for that kid? And they're doing it. Which of course is the best imaginable way to learn about technology to learn about distributed manufacturing, to learn about community and collaboration, and to learn what all of those things are really good for. And we are now mainstreaming. Remember, this was developed by a carpenter and a puppeteer and a community of rank amateurs who really had no particular qualifications. But a month ago, 
we held a conference at Johns Hopkins University that attracted 600 people, including about 30 kids who wanted hands and their parents who wanted hands. And by God, we had workshops in which we explained to the parents and kids how to assemble their hands. We had another workshop for prosthetists who right now can only offer devices like this for eight to $40,000 and we're giving them away for free. And together, someone probably knows um, the Santangelos, they're here in, in Rochester. Um, somewhere along the line, we have found a way of not only giving hands to these kids, but providing new options to the practitioner community, and by the way, catapulting Johns Hopkins Hospital and, this is the invitation, a hospital in Rochester to the forefront of innovation in this field. And in the course of doing this, we've had to change our techniques further. It turns out when people came to the conference, they did not send us their measurements in advance. And so we had a panic attack about 10 days beforehand when we thought we were gonna have about 100 kids and families all disappointed because they weren't gonna get the hands they had come for. So we invented a technique, we built a spreadsheet, we put out a call to our 1,500 member community. We said, we need hands of all these sizes and of every color filament you have. Fill in the blanks let us know what you're printing and mail them to Johns Hopkins Hospital. When we get there, we'll assemble them in the workshops, we'll give, it's, we call it the shoe store model, and it worked. And so we now have a way of reaching out to a community of thousands and saying, for example, true story, in December, a trauma surgeon from the northern border of Israel and Syria is going to spend a week at Hopkins Hospital learning how to do 3D printing, how to assemble these devices. There will be groups of Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts and Heritage Scouts and Jewish Boy Scouts and Catholic Boy Scouts and Islamic Boy Scouts. And they're gonna have a party in which we're gonna put out a call to the entire community. The hands are gonna show up. They're going to do the assembly. And then Dr. Lerner will take them back to Israel where they will be used to provide inexpensive prosthetics to people who are stuck in the nightmare that is Syria right across the border. So it's a multinational, multi-ethnic, multi-religious, and it's going. And once we've done that, we expect to go next to Haiti and perhaps Kenya. And in Kenya, at least, we're gearing up that when we have our hand of Palooza, or hand of Palooza's, whatever the plural is, all over the world, there will also be a video wall and we'll have Kenyan Boy Scouts and Girl Guides collaborating with us and we'll probably do a suitcase party so that whoever wins the raffle will get to carry all of the hands with us to Africa. This thing is just going and going and going. We're beginning to do research on the physical and practical effects of these devices. But I gotta tell you, I saw a video after submitting my slides in which a very articulate 11-year-old um, in America, he hasn't even gotten his hand yet. And the interviewers just caught him saying something that uh, really seems to be a big part of why this has taken off. He said, he said, you know, I have bad dreams and there are these monsters who are coming to get me and now in my dreams I can say, I'm the big guy, and you can't scare me, and now I have two hands, I'm not afraid of you. The psychological effects, not to mention the fact that it is clearly useful for many two-handed tasks, and it turns the kid who seemed like, you know, that shy, odd kid into the coolest kid in the class. It turns out to be a work in progress, and this concludes the November 2014 update. There's a lot to do. It started here in Rochester. It's spreading around the world. Our operators are waiting for your calls. It's a great opportunity. Thank you very much.